I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. Today we're gonna to ponder the very important question, do you need to lube your muzzleloading bullets? So for this specific video, we're testing the Lee Real 250 grain bullets. I picked these up from Flintlocks LLC. We're gonna test these bullets a few different ways. We have this same target posted at 50 and 100 yards. Then after that, we're gonna test the penetration of each of these bullets with my new homemade ballistics gel. Since this is the first time we've had the Hawken at the range for a little bit, I wanna take my cleaning patch here, run it down and back just to make sure that we're nice and dry. We don't have any cleaning residue or oil in there. Just like the other Hawken bullet tests that we've done, I'm gonna be using 80 grains of Swiss 3F powder here to kind of emulate one of those hunting loads that you might be uh, using or, or needing at home. And then we're just gonna put the Lee Reel bullet right in there on top short starting it and I recognize there that I probably shouldn't have tapped that and probably just done a single long press so that's what I'm going to load and set there on top of our powder first up we're going to do our 50 yard target I'm going to do a five shot group at 50 and 100 yards for the first part of this test we're going to be testing these Lee Reel 250 grain bullets with no lube at 50 yards with the same 80 grains of Swiss 3F black powder to see if that lube makes much of a difference at all to the accuracy of the group. Got our chronograph set up here. I'm just gonna try to do a center hold right in the bottom of the sights the best I can. Reading 1626 on the chronograph. 1636 on the chronograph. 1646 on the chronograph. 1633 on the chronograph. 1673 on the chronograph. Here we are for our 50 yard target. You can see we were able to keep everything in the white and even had a couple shots here in uh, the rather large X ring. It's a little bit of a wider group than I anticipated or I would really want, but I think it's a good way and a good place for us to start. Because after all, these tests with the same grain of powder aren't going to necessarily be a super accurate load. From this point, now I can adjust my powder measure going up or down to make sure and, and try to tighten up that group. And I encourage you to do the same thing at home. Don't just see me testing out these loads uh, with these different kinds of bullets and take that hunting. You know, you wanna to go to the range and make sure that you're dialing in your specific load. Back at the bench here, we've got our 250 grain Lee Reel bullet with a little bit of lube on here. Today I'm using some RMC Oxyoke Wonder Lube on this bullet in particular. 1570 on the chronograph. 642.5 on the chronograph. I think that's probably an error. 647 on the chronograph, still not liking that. 600. So we've had issues in the past with the chronograph here. I, I don't know enough about this to, to fix this here in the field. I'm gonna fiddle with it with some of the other tests and, and see if we can get it functioning a little bit better for some of our future tests. That being said, I think we have quite a bit of data from the range day here with this projectile. I hope that's still informative for you. Let's go check out this target. Okay, so coming up on our target here, we have all five of our shots right here in the center coming out of this tradition, St. Louis Hawken. This is much more of what I was hoping to get out of this bullet. And even if there isn't really any question or discussion about lubing this kind of bullet, uh, you know, if you're coming to this totally blind and uh, you know, like me seeing it right here, uh, lubing these 250 grain Lee Reel bullets is gonna improve your performance drastically. We went from quite a bit of spread on our target, even at 50 yards, to having these right in here doing a good job for our kill zone uh, if we're thinking about taking this bullet hunting. Back at the loading bench here, getting set up for the 100 yard shots. I've cleaned the bore uh, to get us back down to what I consider to be a reasonable level. We don't have a lot going for us here at 100 yards. We're using these open sights with kind of a, a pin front sight on this hawk. And, and the sun is, I don't know, I can still see, but I'm gonna use my hat here a little bit to make sure that uh, 
it doesn't totally blind me here. So we're gonna give this a shot. 1622 on the chronograph. If there's a flyer, that'll be it. <laughs> 1669. 1735. 1732. So walking up here, we can see our target, which is really kind of bizarre and not at all what I expected. So we have a three shot group up here. We have one just right in the center of the target. And then we have one over here at four o'clock. We're back on the bench now to test our Lee Reel 250 grain bullets with lube this time at 100 yards. Fourteen ninety two on the chronograph. Fifteen eighty one on the chronograph. Fifteen ninety two on the chronograph. Sixteen oh seven on the chronograph for shot four. Sixteen thirty four for shot five. Coming up on our 100 yard target here, we have a much better target than, uh, than our first round here, but it's still an interesting target, I think. Up here in our upper right hand quadrant, we have three shots stacked up, touching holes. Uh, really a great group, exactly what I'd be looking for. But then down here, we have two shots touching, uh, kind of in our middle and uh, center quadrants here, down here at the bottom. Uh, so it gives us a, a rather large group, I think, right out the gate here but we have some consistency with each of these holes touching. So I'm thinking this comes down to shooter error. Uh, I, I personally think um, I could probably do a little bit of a better job with this. Maybe we should take uh, a couple more shots here and, uh, and see if anything changes. I'm intrigued by the results that we have so far. We have a steadily rising chronograph reading. The tighter and dirtier our bore gets, but we still have fairly consistent groups. So even though our standard deviation is approaching 200, still have an accurate shot at least um, at this distance. So um, it's kind of interesting what's going on here. 1602 on the chronograph for shot number six. So our chronograph went down a little bit that time. Our barrel cooled slightly. Um, do you think that could have contributed to that change in reading? And do you think that reflected a change in accuracy? Let me know. 1586 that time on the chronograph. So for our second two shots, we have one out here in our upper left quadrant, and then we have another in this same group here. So I'm thinking that this is where this particular shot is, is wanting to group. I, I'm pulling, it looks like, a little up and to the right. I'm wondering if this was our last shot because we had such a difference in our chronograph reading. So we have a wide set of, of shots here, but the majority of them are touching uh, in, in some way or another. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. Overall, I think this pretty well shows uh, my hypothesis at least, that you do want to lube these bullets, not just for the, uh, to mitigate the risk of letting up your barrel, but you do see an improvement out of your accuracy, at least in these tests that I've done. As always, I'm not an expert. These aren't perfect ideal factory conditions like we see come out of the projectile manufacturers and the muzzle loading manufacturers. This, I'm just really one guy out here in my backyard in my home range, uh, you know, trying to have some fun with some muzzle loaders and, and seeing what we can come up with. Here we've got our 50 and 100 yard targets for the Lee Reel 250 grain bullet. Like I said earlier, not great conditions um, in regards to the sunlight on the sights, but we still have shots on target and we have some reasonable groups here that I think moving forward we can work through. Um, and it's the kind of thing that we can adjust our loads and we can adjust our sights a little bit if we need to, to bring this stuff in. And here are the 50 and 100 yard targets for the lubed Lee Reel 250 grain bullets. At first glance here, we're getting some better performance with the lube, but it's not as much change as I was expecting. 
Our group size when we went from 50 to 100 yards more than doubled. And initially the 50 yard target looks really good, but I'm interested to see if this is actually repeatable just because of what we're seeing on the 100 yard target. There's a lot of change from 50 to 100 yards. So it has me feeling a little bit skeptical about the performance here. My buddy Barry from the Volunteer Rifleman channel, link in the description, suggests that I try 100 grains of 2F black powder to better stabilize the Lee real bullet Based on his experience helping some other muzzleloading marksmen try to figure out the Lee real bullet, he found that it needed a much larger charge to bump up, fully engage the rifling, and stabilize while it was traveling in the air. So maybe we'll have to do another video testing out that load. Now it's time to see what this thing will do for penetration. I think we got a hit. We knocked the gel off the stand here, but we do have what looks like some really good ballistic catching here. I do wanna say we penetrated through the plastic and we've gone in to some milk jugs here. We actually busted off the front of my board. Let me get this gel up. This end here is our entry end for the Lee Reel 250 grain bullet. Uh, when picking it up, I noticed on the underside, we split through the bottom of the gel, which I think is actually what caused this old board to break. Let me flip it over here so you can see. So we have our entry over here on the left-hand side. You can see that expansion, and we've cut through the top of the block up here. That expansion is, I don't know, 10 inches long or so in the gel before it starts to diminish. But you can see our exit hole is right there in the gel. Really small <laughs> exit hole, which is kind of funny but we were able to capture that energy in this homemade gel, which I'm super excited about. After the gel, which is about 18 inches long, I didn't think the gel would be able to stop the bullet, so I've stacked up milk jugs. Here we have our entry into the first jug after the gel block, and we have an exit down here, um, and we weren't able to penetrate through a second jug after the gel, but I did find the recovered bullet here on the ground just off to the sides. Overall, super happy that that worked. I was kind of nervous that the gel wouldn't work and this would have all been for nothing, but I think this is a viable way for us to test a little bit more accurately each of these bullets that we've been testing. As always, uh, homemade ballistics gel, milk jugs and everything is only a minor comparison to meat and bone. So if you're taking these hunting, you know, you still want to do your research, still want to do some practice and figure out what's going to be right for you and what you're hunting. But <laughs> that being said, this was super fun and I'm excited to do more of this with some more bullets in this coming year. I hope you've enjoyed this maybe more comprehensive look at one of these bullets that we've got here. Again, thanks to Flintlocks LLC for getting these over to me. Really appreciate that. It's been one that has been requested a lot, these Lee Real bullets. So I'm happy that we have some on the range now to play with and have fun. Like I said, we can do some more tests with these bullets as we go through the year here. And we've got other bullet tests and other projectile tests to do as well because there's so much variation in muzzle loading. It's not the kind of thing where you can go out and just buy a box of ammo and be good to go. There's some of that testing and some of that involvement in this that makes it a lot of fun to be a part of. So I encourage you, if you enjoy this kind of thing, get out there and try it with your own muzzle loaders. Try some of these tests, and if nothing else, just get out and practice a little bit more with your muzzle loaders and enjoy connecting with some of the history that's out there. As always, the first link in the description will get you to this particular test with a bunch of images and data at ilovemuzzleloading.com. It's where you can find all the measurements all the speeds and everything in text so you can look at it and read it and compare your notes to it. As always, if there's something about this that you'd like to see improved on or you have some thoughts on it, please don't hesitate to reach out and tell me. You can uh, leave a comment below or shoot me an email at ilovemuzzleloading at gmail.com and uh, we can have a discussion about this kind of test and, and the projectiles and things and, and how I go about it. I'd love to hear your opinions and, and improve on this if I can, because if this isn't informative and it's not valuable, then there's no point in me coming out and doing this, except for my own enjoyment and having fun. But I want this to be as informative as I can for the folks of you that are out there enjoying your muzzleloaders. I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.